Good evening, Greater Grace Christian Fellowship. Welcome to Thursday night prayer service. Man, it is awesome to be here. Right? How are you doing tonight, Marilyn? We're good. We're blessed. Emma, you doing good? Yes, we're doing, we're doing well. blessed. How are you doing, Everett? You doing all right? All right. And then Anu on the piano, he's he's over there already getting his fingers. Yanira, how are you doing? We got a couple of people in the audience. Man, we're here tonight. We're ready to, to worship. We're ready to just open our hearts up and let the Holy Spirit just take over and let us just be be in that connection with Christ tonight, with the Father tonight, be in that kingdom mind tonight, because man, this is what lifts us up. When we get to sit here together, together, together. right? Together. Yes, and we get to worship the Lord together. Yes. Man, but I know you're at home. Stand up anyways. Worship the Lord. Amen. Sing with us. You know, we'll call out the songs. The first fact, the first one, God is so good. Look it up on your yes. phone and let's sing you this thing worthy. together. You are worthy. Marilyn, Amen. pray us in. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Be with us tonight, O oh Lord God, as we praise and worship and as we pray tonight on behalf of others, O oh Lord God. We just pray, we invite your presence in our midst tonight because we just want to glorify your name today. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
for the last time. so good. Thank you, Jesus. And he is our defender.
to do is worship Praise God. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We have a good group here at the church, and i um, just so excited. Uh, Ken Tran is watching. I saw Ken make some comments and others. And another lady that I want to mention, Jessica Mata, uh, who we used to know as Jessica um Umpierre from Brazil, was uh, part of our first baptism here, and she's in Canada now. And I just want to say hi, Jess. And uh, good to have you watching uh, from Canada. Hope everything is going well. We're going to have our um, prayer and praise tonight. We've been praising the Lord. It's amazing to praise Jesus, isn't it? And uh, we're so happy to be here. We're so happy that today, um, even though everything crazy is still going on around us and all this crazy political stuff and all the crazy stuff about COVID and different things like that and the lack of movement around the world, uh, but I'll tell you who is moving. Jesus is moving in our hearts tonight. And the Holy Spirit is moving in our hearts tonight. And we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to move in the lives of other people tonight. And this evening, I want to um, just make uh, a couple of announcements. We're doing a, pr uh, we're doing a, a church yard sale again. Uh, we did the other church yard sale already for the youth. You know, we, uh, we raised $2,000 and said kids to camp. But then camp was canceled. So it's on reserve for next year. And we'll send those kids to camp next year and even more. Um, but we're doing another yard sale this fall. And if you are part of Greater Grace here in Silver Spring, we have asked the neighborhood to donate. But we also figure that you've been sitting around your houses collecting things and trying to clean out. Don't give it to Goodwill because they're not taking anymore. But we'll take it because we need a lot of stuff for the yard sale. Uh, what we want to use the funds for this time is our roof is broken because a tree uh, fell on it or dropped a bunch of branches on it and it's all pierced in the back. So we're, you know, a good amount of it is covered. Most of it is covered by the insurance. However, we also need to fix the other roof on the office and Sunday school room and kitchen part of the building as well. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to raise another 2000 or maybe even 3000 uh, or you can just send us cash. That would be fine, too. Right, Pastor Dwayne? Cash is all. My dad would always say, uh, cash is king. Or he would say, uh, my two favorite w words in the English language are free and cash. So uh, anyway, but uh, we're going to open in prayer uh, again. And Pastor Dwayne has an awesome message for us tonight. So let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those who are watching online, for all those who are here, and for others who will watch this later. And Lord, I just pray that you would touch hearts this evening. Use this word that we're going to receive from the word of God tonight to inspire us. Uh, use this word tonight to stir up our hearts in prayer, to stir up our hearts for the souls that need to be saved, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you would use us in that way. In your precious name, amen. Let's welcome Pastor Dwayne. Praise God. It's, uh, I'm always excited to be here on Thursday. Always an opportunity to be able to share with you the uncompromising word of God. Amen? Amen. So, you know, as I was praying this morning about uh, what God has put on my heart to share with you guys, and, uh, uh, you may want to open up your note-taking app on your phone because I want to address some things that are going on now. You know, I'm a life application uh, teacher when it comes to uh, ministry. That's what my calling is, is, is in teaching. So what I want to share with you today is what does it mean to embrace faith over fear? Because that's where we're living in. We're living in a time right now where what does it really mean to embrace faith over fear? And right now people are embracing fear more than they are embracing their faith. So we need to know what the Word of God says about that. And so if you, 
I'm going to share some scripture with you because everything I do is always, that's where my foundation lies in the word. In Isaiah 41.10, this is the King James Version. It says, fear thy not. So it starts out telling you not to fear, but I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. So we know that God doesn't want us to be in a state of fear. When challenges that we're facing or when we're going through storms, uh, as we're, some people are going through now, in Psalms 118.6, it says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. You know, I, I, I think about a story I was told many years ago. And uh, it's about this couple and their son. And this is out in out west. You ever been out west in places like Nebraska, Oklahoma? Land is very flat there, but it's a uh, tornado country out there. You know, and I grew, grew up as a small kid in Indiana and I still remember the tornadoes. And uh, when you see those funnel clouds coming down from the sky. And this particular couple uh, and the son, the son was somewhat, I guess you would say, he was challenged from a mental standpoint. Uh, but uh, they were out in the field. Tornado comes up. The uh, dad and the mom sees the funnel cloud uh, starting to form and they realize that man this is a tornado coming. So they begin to take off and they call their son and they start running toward the barn. Back in those days they used to have these uh, shelters that they were like doors that would open up you could go down uh, up under the barns or up under the house when you had tornadoes coming. So as they take off they start running of course the son has left his parents behind in the storm, the tornado, shall I say, is closing in on them. So the parents realize that they're not going to make it. And so they begin to fall down on their knees and they start praying. And as the boy is running, he looks back. And he's almost there. And he looks back at his parents. He says, come on, Mom and Pa. A scared prayer don't count for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so when we talk about faith and fear, we want to make sure we're not in that situation, that our fear is overcoming us, that we've lost our faith in the things that God. And we have to look at his words and what his promises tell us. And he says in Joshua 1, 9, have, have not I command thee, now listen to this, this is a command, to be strong and a Good courage, be not afraid, neither be not dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Amen. So he's already given us that promise when it comes to fear. And if you're a child of God, your blood bought, paid for, you're a kingdom citizen, you have a passport that guarantees you eternity in his kingdom, then you have no need to be fearing of anything. And if anything, you know, he has called us, that's why he's called us to walk by faith and not by sight. Because we cannot allow ourselves to be caught up into the circumstances and the fear that's being perpetrated now. In fact, when you start hearing people talk about fear, you need to just get away from those kind of people. Amen. And I really mean you need to get away from them. But he, because we're not, we have not been given that calling. And James 1, 6, he said, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. How many of you are wavering in your prayer life? Wow. Just waving back and forth. <laughs> just, 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 right there, just like that. How many of you like that wavering back and forth in your prayer life? One day you're up for God, the next day you're down on him. Woo! <laughs> because you constantly are looking at the circumstances. You're constantly watching and, and instead of being focused on the negative stuff that's being put out by the enemy, which is coming through your media and all these other things, I want you to spend time feeding on his word. Amen. You know, so you're not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea 
driven with the wind and tossed. So that means you're going wherever the, the circumstances, uh, if you're about the circumstances of life to take, you're just going right. back and forth. Now faith, he says, is the substance of things hoped for. What's the difference between faith and hope? What's the difference? A lot of people think they're hope. You know, a lot of people say, man, I got a lot of hope. No faith. Pastor Kim, I'm hoping, man. I got a lot of hope. I got a lot of hope and so on and so on. Well, the reason, what's the big difference in faith and hope? I like to look at this analogy. If I'm in the boat, faith allows me to hold on while the boat is sinking. I mean, hope allows me to hold on while the boat is sinking. But faith stops the leaks in the boat. That's the big difference. That's why it's the evidence of things not seen because we cannot rely on our five senses that we have and them being able to uh, really uh, allow us to be aware of the things that are going on beyond our virtual perception. You know, it's interesting, you know, when we look at uh, sharing that, uh, uh, this in Hebrews 11, uh, 1, where it talks about the evidence of things not seen. And it's amazing that, you know, as human beings, one of the things God gave us, we do, we were born with faith. Most of us don't even realize it. We practice faith every day, and we're not aware of it. But it's a different type of faith. That's a human type of faith. But there's the God kind of faith, which is a supernatural type of faith with a faith that's unseen. That actually, you practice your faith every day. You practice your faith when you leave out of your house, you get in your car, you don't even think about it. And some of us practice our faith on our jobs. How do we do that? Well, we believe the person that we work for and the company that we work for, we're going to get paid by that company <laughs> because they told us that. We, yet we don't know their financial statement, but they tell us that we're going to get paid at the end of the week or every two weeks that money is going to be in our, our account or we're going to get a paycheck. Why? Because they told us that. And we have the faith to believe it. In fact, some of us have a faith that is so great that we already spend the money before we get it. Oh. That's how much faith we got. Oh. <laughs> oh. How about that? Great. Isn't that amazing? But when it comes to God, we seem to question his faith and his word when it comes to us. You know, in the last of that, and I, I like what uh, James 5, 14 says, uh, 14, 15, it says, is it any sick among you? I like this because this applies to me. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the, and in the name of the Lord. And of the faith shall, and, and the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall uh, heal, uh, heal them, and if he had committed any sins, they should be forgiven. You know, uh, these are God's promises, and we have a, a choice when it comes to embracing faith or fear. Because God's given us an answer on both of them. Mm -hmm. He's given us an answer on fear, how we as citizens of his kingdom, his children, his sons and daughters, how we should embrace that. And it's not with fear, and it's not with doubt, and it's not with uncertainty. Because God is a man who cannot lie. It's literally impossible for him. And we have to remember that faith is also a fact, that faith is also an act. And so, as we're seeking God in these areas for deliverance, and I know, like you said, you, you listen to the news every day, you hear about how the job situation is. If you work in certain industries, like my wife once worked in, worked in, in the hospitality industry, or you're in the airline industry, like my niece in uh, Cincinnati works in, boy, it's not good news that you hear. You hear about all the layoffs. Pilots getting laid off. Uh, I think I heard one of the airlines, just companies today, laying off, I don't know, 10, 20,000 people getting laid off. The hotel industry. They're talking about the next three or four years of be coming back. 
that can strike fear and panic in the hearts of people in the scripture. You start asking them, so how are we going to make it? And I saw something today that was really, it puts a lot of fear in people. I saw a story about the evictions in, in some of these cities where people are actually getting evicted now. They actually, and the evictions are coming in, uh, I think this was down in Texas, out in Houston, where, you know, they were talking about the amount of the evictions that are coming in so, so fast, and, and there's the uh, constables down there who carry out the eviction, and, and uh, one of the guys there, he been on the police car for 30 years, he said, man, this is tough, put me by. He said, this is not easy. We take no joy we have to do this, but as he was showing the report, I kind of court order here. I have to evict these people. And one lady, uh, she was elderly, sick, it was so hot outside, he just decided not to follow through on the eviction of it. So I can't just put this woman out the street. I gotta get somebody to come and help and assist this woman. So we know the fear is real, but we also know God's word is real too, amen? And that's what we want to make sure that we stay focused on, his word. One of the things that I do in my daily challenges is that, and I wanted to share this with you, and I think this is so important, because you know, the Bible tells us that we should pray without ceasing. What does that mean? That means sentence prayers, and that's a continued conversation with God, and that's how you pray without ceasing. What are sentence prayers? I spend my time during the day sometime when I'm not working on some of my other projects, but I'm always praying and they're, they're short of sentence prayer. And I'll address the issues or I'll bring the word before God because I'll, I'll do that. But then they're short things. It's like, it's like if you saw me, you say, okay, that guy's talking to himself. Amen. And that's what it looks like. I'm saying, Lord, you know, <laughs> what is the best way for me to go about a, a, a dealing with this situation? Do I need to go to your word on this? And that's a constant thing. And they're just short sentences. And I would encourage you to do that on a regular basis. Uh, you know, when you're alone with God, and, you know, in your office or you're at home, or if you have that time to do that, not necessarily in front of people, because they wouldn't understand what was going on, amen? But uh, I, wanted to, I want to encourage you to embrace faith over fear and understand what God has the fear is something we don't have that spirit of fear anymore. Amen. We don't have to live in fear. Amen. If you don't know God, then you ought to be fearful. That's right. Because there's uncertainty there. But we don't have that. We're kingdom children. You're sons and daughters of a king. You're part of a royal family. And the things that we see are first are not here but in the kingdom. And there's a reason for that he tells us to seek the kingdom of heaven first, because he knows the uncertainties in this world. And for us, that's what we need to be doing. If you're not doing that, I want to encourage you to do that, because that is part of your prayer life. Like I told you before, you can't separate faith and prayer and faith. You know, it's like taking the, the wet from the water. You can't do it. They both go together. And the fear is not that third part. It doesn't fit, fit in there, because that's not what you have been given. That's not what God has spoken into your life. And so as I close out, I want to close out with a prayer here. Open up with a prayer here. This is from uh, Miss Casey. She had left it in the prayer box, and we want to honor that. And um, she had prayed about, uh, she had requested us to pray for her. I think she was having strains, strained muscles in her stomach, and had to, uh, to make a couple of doctor visits uh, back in July. In August, so I want to lift that sister up because she is a very valuable asset to this ministry. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for Miss Casey. We just thank you, Lord, for her commitment, truly sold out in the calling that you have given her, her Father. We know, Lord, that I mean, she has, if you ever had an opportunity to watch Miss Casey as she works with those children, man, you know, truly she has that anointing. Uh, a truly a great anointing of, of working with kids and, and we just thank you for the call that you gave her. We just thank you for all the things that she does about it. I was telling somebody this week, man, Pastor Kim, the Memphis and Pastors, I was telling her, I said, man, this place, uh, she's not only 
takes care of the kids in the, in, in the, in the uh, kids' ministry here, but she's also the landscaper around here. <laughs> she takes care of everything around here. That's the reason the outside looks so good and probably why the deers want to feed over here all the time because in this case, you're doing the landscaping. <laughs> so we're, we're so thankful for her. And Father, we just lift her up right now. We just want to pray for her, Father, Father, right now, that you will touch her right now wherever she is. If she's watching right now, just touch her right now, Lord, with your healing power. Heal her from the top of her head to sole of her feet, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you're healing God, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we can just bring that request to you, the great physician. And by your stripes, she will stay healed from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. We thank you, Lord, for all that what she does and her calling to be part of this ministry. And if you uh, want, I also want to encourage you to uh, send in your prayer request. And it don't have to be necessary your request, but somebody that you know that needs prayer, somebody that needs to get saved, you want to pray for the salvation. And the other thing, send in those testimonies because we want to hear the testimonies. We know that as we're praying and interceding for people, your lives are being blessed, or someone you know is being touched by this ministry. Let us know, send it in on Facebook, or send it in on uh, YouTube, and the worship team will be coming up to lead us in worship again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for the powerful word today.
days up, and tonight I have a prayer request from one of our own. We have a, a young man that's young. He's not very old. I'll leave his name out because we're online. But Lord, we're praying for you, brother. We're praying for your gums. We're praying for healing, Lord. We're praying that you will touch him right now, Lord Jesus. That right now, as he is standing in the back of this room, yes. that he will feel your healing touch. Yeah. Lord, we lift him to you right now. That is your child, and he is being raised in the Lord. He is being raised to serve you, and we're so thankful for that. We're thankful for a request from someone his age that knows that when we come forward with a prayer, we can stand together in that prayer. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his parents' life. And we're just thankful, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I for testimony, too. You know, last week we prayed for our very good friend and sister here, Yanira, for, remember, a job, an opportunity near her home in Frederick. In Frederick. And guess what? No way. She was just like, oh, she was so excited texting me that she got an email or a message from the place that she really wanted to work at and she for interviews scheduled. So she got an interview and guess what? She told me today that instead of just one, she has three opportunities that she can choose from. So Father, we continue to pray that one of those jobs, actually the Lord, is Yanira's. And it's going to be the best one for her. And we just thank you. Lord, what a great testimony it is of your goodness, Lord God. That truly, Lord, when we pray in faith, you will respond, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Another testimony is that my brother um, had a procedure today in Canada, in a hospital. And uh, they requested prayer early morning. So the group that has started fellowshipping at our home in the Philippines, they had their first prayer service at our house this morning, which was last night for them. So I right away called them and said, these are my prayer requests because today my brother is going to have his, you know, procedure. So lo and behold, they pray and I FaceTime with them when I was driving to work and they said, we're going to claim him that he's not going to have any side effects. Guess what? My sister-in-law just texted me before we came here. She said, answer prayer. He is well right now in the hospital recovering, and maybe they're going to leave tomorrow to go back home. So that's how amazing God is. Because this procedure that he had is kind of like supposed to be, would have a lot of side effects that he wouldn't even be able to, you know, do things. And another great testimony, my brother was actually, you know, he was diagnosed, but he led somebody at the hospital to Christ. Isn't that amazing? He was crying, telling us that he prayed for someone who has cancer, and he said, God, just move him. He didn't know this guy, but God moved him, moved him to share his testimony because he was diagnosed in 2010, told by the doctor that he had three years to live, to live. and it's 2020. He's still alive, leading worship in their church, and glory to God in the highest. Praise God. Yeah, what a testimony. There's another... God's leading and Michelle. Yes, Father God, we just pray for Shay here and Michelle. And we pray for your leading in their ministry, Father God. Lord, we just pray right now that you will continue to use this couple to glorify your name. You know their heart's desires, Father God. You know what is their motivation, Father God. It's you, Lord God. They just want to give glory to your name. They just want to allow you to use them to glorify your name. And Father God, to share the love of Christ to people through the talents that you have given both of them, Lord. And thank you for their willingness. Thank you, Lord, for their hearts, Father God, that are just saying, Lord, use us. Only few people would do that. They just allow you, Lord, to just use them and the gifts that you have given them. So we just pray, Father God, for both of them, that you will grant their desires, O Lord God, to give glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Who else is praying? I don't know if I pray for my wife. Of course. Lord, you know the situation that's going on. Lord, you know the struggles that are happening. You know the yes. juggles that she's doing with motherhood, work, um, ministry. Uh, it just, the list continues and continues, and the enemy doesn't like it. 
right now, I'm lifting my wife to you right now, Lord, that you would just put a hedge of protection around her mental state, Lord, that you would help her go through these things and, and handle these things, but not in herself, but in you, Lord. She's a strong woman. She would never send a request up to you like this in front of everybody, but Lord, I'm lifting my wife up as a spiritual leader of my house, Lord. and my house will not be shaken by the enemy because we serve you, and Lord, she needs your protection right now, Lord. And Lord, let her just continue to have that, yes. that, that drive, that love. But let it be less burdensome. Let it be lighter. Let it be equally yoking, Lord. And I ask this in your name. Amen. And I also would like to continue to pray for my husband and my brother, Father God, Lord. We pray for my husband, Lord, Mr. Lee, Pastor Lee, and my brother, Marlon. Lord, I pray, Lord God. Lord, I know the enemy hates both of them. But thank you, Lord, that you love them. And I just lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We continue to believe for restoration. We continue to believe for healing. Continue to believe, Father God, that, Lord, you will set them free from pain, Lord God. For this means that stiffness will go away in the name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, whatever this um, side effects of the, the medication that is taking, Lord God, please, I pray that you will take those away so he can, he can rest at night, Lord God. And I continue to pray for my brother that you will also restore him, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. But because, Lord, we, just, we are just exercising our faith tonight. That's what we heard. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 We also want to pray for uh, Pastor Brent's wife, Lucy. Yes. Lucy Malenka. Lord, we want to pray for a miracle for her eyes. Yes. Lord, that you would heal her, that you would restore uh, her vision 100% of the one yes. eye. And the eye that she can't see anything, we pray for again that you would restore vision 100% mm -hmm. in that eye, Lord God. And take away the underlying yes. condition that's causing that to happen. And we pray, God, for that in Jesus' name. We also want to pray for Pastor Brent's brother who has a late stage cancer. And we want to pray, God, that you would do a mighty healing in his life, but also that you would do a mighty work of salvation in his life. When he does not know Jesus, as a Savior, Lord, and I pray, God, that you would just work on him, Lord, that you would touch him, that you would convict him, Lord, and let him know how much you love him and how much you died for him on the cross. Yes. Lord, I want to pray, too, for my daughter, Hannah, and her husband, Fernando, in San Francisco, and their business, Proyecto Diaz, the coffee company. They are so stressed right now with as busy as they've been with this um, COVID and all the work they've had to do hands-on and with their employees. I pray for a great blessing for them, Lord, Amen. that you would give them great business and enough that they could also afford to hire more employees. And thank you for the blessing on their business, but also give them rest. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would just do a mighty, mighty, mighty work, Lord. I want to pray for my brother Jonathan, Lord, who's back here doing the sound, who has just got into the real estate business, got his license, Lord. And I pray for him, Lord, that you would help him to sell homes, yes, Lord, Lord. Yes. and that he would have great big fat commissions, Lord, to support his family. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do a mighty work in his life, Lord, I ask. I want to pray, too, for our church, Lord, as we go through this um, time as everybody else. We're, no, we're nothing different. But I know that, Lord, we are planning on doing two services beginning in October yes. on Sunday morning, 9 o'clock and 10.30. And I pray, God, that you would lead us in that, Lord, that you help us to strength, be strengthened, especially the music team, the praise team, Lord God, that you would help us figure out how exactly we're going to do all this. And also the Sunday school, Lord Jesus, help us to be led in the right way to do this, Lord, for the body of Christ so that we can all meet every Sunday, but with different times. And then also you would grow the church, Lord. Think of the people that have been coming uh, the new people, Lord God, some people that don't even know the Lord, that you would save them, Lord, that you would do a mighty work in our neighborhood here, uh, in the neighborhoods around us, Lord, that you would lead more people to this place, and also bless us and help us to get back out of the streets, masks or no masks, to evangelize, Lord. And I pray, God, for this time that we're going to have on September 26th, I believe, with the Billy Graham crusade, um, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Associate. They don't call it crusades anymore, do they? Because, you know, we don't want to come out with swords or anything. Uh, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association that's going to have prayer at the Catholic
Capitol and a march from the Lincoln Memorial all the way to the Capitol buildings. And I think there's going to be a lot of people and we're going to be there. I pray that you keep us safe and that you would answer prayer for this country, Lord. That you would bless our leaders with wisdom, Lord Jesus, with wisdom. Father, do a mighty work. Bless our county leaders, Lord. Bless our state leaders. Bless our federal leaders, Lord, our president, our um, the president's cabinet, the Congress, uh, the House of Representatives, the senators, Lord Jesus. No, I'm not worried about political parties, Lord God, but just that you would bless our nation and that thy will be done, Lord God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus, so much. Father, bless and do a mighty work as we close our service tonight with a song. Let's all, if you want to stand with us in your homes and if you want to praise the Lord with us, let us praise him together as we sing a final song tonight before we close. I want to thank Pastor Dwayne for that amazing message. And I want to pray, God, that many people will tune in later on, um, uh, log into the web on our, our page and listen to it. Uh, but let's all sing together. Thank you, Lord.
our 14th year anniversary of Sunday morning services. And, and we know, we know what that means. We know what 14 years means. Don't forget, it means watermelon for everybody. We're going to have so many watermelons here. We're going to have them all cut, and you'll be able to Daddy, grab one. So let's Daddy. fill up the yard. We're having this service outdoors. The what weather is going to be outstanding. Yeah. The music is going to be phenomenal. We're going to have some special testimonies as well. And we're looking forward so much to seeing you Sunday morning at 1030 right up there in the uh, in the in the lawn let's fill this place up make me go get more chairs from downstairs and we'll have a ball we also have the picnic tables god bless you see you tonight